if we can just go back real quick, just the pain sure. that people just underappreciate. I mean, the longer a person's in pain, it's like this is, you know, I say to somebody, say to somebody like, you know, if, if, if this has been going on for, for three years, what's a realistic time that you think reasonably that even if you saw me three times a week, what would be realistic for you to have 90% less pain than you do now? Oh, 90%. Um, what type of pain are we talking about? Like fibromyalgia? No, no, no. If I, let, let's, let's just say, let's just say it's, um, let's just say it's neck pain. Oh, it'll definitely take you eight to 12 weeks. There you go. Eight to 12 weeks. And that's getting you out of pain. And that's three times a day. Right. I mean, excuse me, three right. times a week. Right. And that's getting you out of pain. That hasn't reformed the curvature exactly. in your neck. That hasn't retrained the muscles. Yep. That hasn't stretched the joints. Yep. You know, that'll be started in there. That's 24 to 36 visits. And that yeah. would be, that would be, honestly, what an investment. Like you, this has been going on for three years. Now, if you, as opposed to, this has been going on for three days, Doc, then you could probably fix it in one visit. Yeah, it'll probably take you two weeks. Yeah, th but this is what yeah. people don't get. The longer you're in pain, the longer you loop your nervous system into the signal of pain. And, and just like any nerve, it gets thicker, it gets wired, it gets myelinated in the brain. And, and when it comes to things like fibromyalgia, Unfortunately, which is an autoimmune disease and, and it's a nightmare to diagnose because nobody wants to diagnose it But at the end of the day that pain starts to get myelinated in the brain and and they, it starts to loop in the body and You the expectancy of pain is always there, right? And so you're dealing with in your 20 to 30 minute visit to a chiropractor or to, or to whoever you're going for your for your pain management that you go to once or twice a week Listen, man, you've, you have looped this in your body for so long that you're asking for, for pain-free movement. You leave for 10, 15, 20 minutes, but you have to do your homework elsewhere. Yeah. To your point, you have to eat right, you gotta sleep right, you gotta do these other things that go under the radar and underappreciated. You go to a standard medical doctor, they're gonna give you a shot, or they're gonna give you some blunt force trauma medication. Right, but you know, it's funny, people go take, uh, I do a lot of work with uh, PTSD and emotional issues, and if you go to your uh, psychologist or your, your psychiatrist, I'm sorry, uh, or your family doctor and they give you Lexapro, they're like, look, it's not gonna do anything for eight to 12 weeks and people are all happy, yeah. like, okay, yeah, I'll just take it blindly for eight to 12 weeks. You know, they come to a chiropractic office or, or we do nutritional work with somebody and we're like, look, you'll start to feel a change in four to six, four to six weeks. <laughs> so the medication that's poisoning you and controlling you yeah is okay if it takes 12 then weeks. But you're eventually gonna have to change in a year or two right. anyway. The rebuilding yourself so that you're taking control of yourself and getting your health back, people don't want us even wait the four to six weeks to, to start to see a change. It, it's, it's crazy how TV commercials and uh, the medical society has really just warped our sense of what health is. You know, People should constantly be working towards health um, and you know, and that will help get rid of the pain and the anxiety um, and stress that people feel and not rely on these medications. You know, I can't tell you how many people come in and tell me that, you know, uh, I have to take eight Tylenol a day and I've been doing it and now it's not working. I've been doing it for, you know, three months. Eight Tylenol a day is toxic. It's, you're already damaging your liver, man, it's all right? And it happens all the time. And what I'm trying to explain to them is, is that this problem didn't start last week when the Tylenol no longer worked, right? You know, this started three months ago or longer when you started to have to take Tylenol. Right, right. And they can't get it through their head. You know, people can't understand. I don't understand that. Everyone takes Tylenol. No. Right. Everyone doesn't. And even Tylenol. worse, Advil, yeah. you know, or any ibuprofen all the time. It's amazing how people take, um, these um, medications, these uh, NSAIDs, and have no uh, concept of how many deaths a year occur from it. And there's some argument over how much it is, but a safe number in the United States is 15,000 deaths yeah. a year. How much gut dysbiosis is there from NSAIDs? Oh. It's ridiculous. It, they don't even they, they don't even look at that. It's ridiculous. But it's insane. You know, over the counter medications that people are taking are causing a lot of health issues, 100%. a lot of deaths. 
Um, and yet the doctors are worried about people recommending to take uh, vitamins and minerals. Right. It, it, it's crazy. That's going to kill you. Right. That's, that, that's what's going to put you over the edge is going to be the fish oil you're taking. Yeah. Um, but a lot of times, like when we were talking about with uh, trying to treat chronic problems, one of the things um, I originally used to treat exclusively when I was first in practice was migraine. I only treated yeah. migraine patients. Let's talk about it. Oh, okay. So, uh, but this is going to bring in one of the things I wanted to bring up that I was referring before is the biggest thing when we fix migraine patients is getting them not to take their medication. They're so used to getting like the inkling of a headache, that little glare, mm -hmm. uh, that little um, flicker in their eye. And I used to suffer from migraines. That's why I specialized in it. Mm -hmm. And when I was very young, I had terrible, terrible migraines for years. And, um, one of the biggest things is they're so wired into the migraines is that as soon as they feel it, they want to go and take the medication and we have to retrain them to just wait, you know? Um, so migraines actually are one of the easier things I've found to treat, which sounds crazy because it's, it's such a problem for, uh, medicine, uh, for, for people. And I would say we've probably reduced, 95% of the patient's migraines by 95%, <laughs> okay? Mm -hmm. So it's not that they're totally gone, but if you're a migraine uh, that you used to get, you know, uh, five, six times a week is down to once every two or three months, that's pretty darn good. Um, and the biggest reason uh, we find for migraines is two. Um, and it makes a lot of biochemical sense, is uh, migraines are mostly in women. Mm -hmm. And they're mostly with their menstrual cycle. Mm -hmm. So those things have to be involved. And then the major organ involved with um, hormones or really detoxifying hormones is the liver. Yeah. So you have people who are talking about, you know, smells set me off. That's a chemical compound has to be broken down by the liver. Yeah, it's perfumes, you know, set me off. The DAL um, enzyme. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So what happens is, is that uh, what I believe is that the liver becomes overburdened, not diseased. You're not running, you know, an SGOT, SGT. You're not running lab tests to see if the liver has a disease. No, it doesn't. It just can't handle the burden exactly. of the switching of the hormones yeah. because during hormone, uh, during a menstrual cycle, it can go up to 400%. Right. So just to clarify, because I think people underappreciate, like for your, to this point, how much estrogen has to be cleared through the liver. You know, people don't appreciate like that these hormones are cleared through the liver. That's right. why women are so much more prone to gallstones because you know, you're, you're putting tremendous estrogen, estrogen dominant women are much more prone. So to, to your point, uh, it's hormones that also have to be cleared by the liver. Yeah. People are used to thinking of just like things that they eat being cleared through the liver and alcohol being cleared through the liver, right. etc. And well, that brings up alcohol is a big trigger sure. for people because the liver is a row of burden. That also brings up stress. Mm -hmm. You produce a lot of hormones, cortisol uh, and other hormones when you're under stress and that has to be cleared by the liver exactly. also. So you have this, this cascade of uh, problems overwhelming the liver. Mm -hmm. Again, not disease, it's just slow. And you can do what's called a phase one, phase two, liver test where you can actually measure the speed of it. But what I found is that if you just support the liver right. with vitamins and minerals, uh, milk thistle, artichoke, yeah. turmeric, samillarian, mm -hmm. these are all really well-tested herbs that have been around for thousands of years and they actually have been proven uh, in tons of research to actually speed up liver function, yeah. you'll basically start to reduce the frequency and severity of migraines. Absolutely. And our, our mark is 12 weeks. For most women um, or most migraine sufferers, which are women, uh, have a, like a 90% reduction in their migraines by 12 weeks. To, to your point also, you're mentioning, you mentioned Tylenol before in the liver. That even think things like using N-acetylcysteine, NAC, you know, which is literally like, that's how they would clear it you know, in, in the hospital. They would right. use NAC to, to clear to clear, um, you know, Tylenol poisoning, but you can still, you know, use it for glutathione support for, for the liver, you know, actually for right. the whole body. Yeah, so, but everything we do for uh, trying to get rid of a migraine, uh, all the Tylenol, all the Advil, all yeah. the Motrin, all the Excedrin, 
uh, all the uh, Topamax, everything they give for people is just making the problem worse Absolutely. because it's more of a burden on uh, the liver. And then what happens is you start to get rebound mm -hmm. uh, migraines. Yeah, so where, explain re what rebound right. I mean, it, So a rebound uh, migraine or a headache is you take a medication to get rid of uh, the migraine, but the medication itself is enough to start triggering the process again. So you get temporary relief and then you get another one and then you take the medication again. And what it does is it brings the window uh, between the migraines closer and closer together. And then their solution is to just give you a different drug. Exactly. And then it starts the process over and over again. Whereas uh, my approach, my functional medicine approach is to actually strengthen the liver uh, using very safe nutritional supplements vitamins and minerals that are used in the liver to function um, and usually will give like an adrenal support because most of these people are emotionally and physically worn out from having um, so many migraines and headaches. Yeah. And that's a big thing, or, or my QA to the next uh, uh, subject is uh, dealing with uh, chronic issues where people have had chronic pain, whether it be neck pain, back pain, fibromyalgia, um, stomach problems, we're, we're so caught up on treating their pain that we don't realize that it's now caused emotional trauma right. and uh, just an overall weakness in their body, their ability to deal with any physical or emotional stress because every day they've been dealing with it. And so what we've started to do over the last few years is not just address the underlying problem causing uh, the pain or symptom uh, to improve them health, but then also supporting uh, the nervous system and emotionally uh, because they've been worn out from dealing with uh, the physical pain. Yeah, and so is that your second pillar to treating the migraines, what you're describing? Yeah. So it's the so liver and then this emotional support. Then emotional support, uh, both uh, emotionally where we actually reduce the uh, stress, anxiety of I'm going to get a migraine because that's huge. Yeah, do, you, do you use any breath work techniques with people? We use breath work techniques and we use um, a technique called neuroemotional technique where we have people visualize being healthy, mm -hmm. um, which is really big because a lot of times people visualize people, um, you know, just calming themselves when they're in pain. I try and say it like this when I'm working with somebody uh, with emotional stress and anxiety from their pain or from PTSD or anxiety. We do two things. One, we try and lighten what's ever stressing them out using this NET visualization and tapping techniques yes. so that they don't feel so overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And then two, we make it comfortable for them to vision themselves happy mm -hmm. and healthy. A lot of people are scared of being happy and healthy because they think that if I'm feeling good, something bad's gonna happen. Yeah. I've, you know, I haven't had a migraine in four weeks oh my God, I'm really, really do. And one of the things we need to do is to train them, no, you're okay, and you'll be okay. Because if they get so stressed out over trigger, uh, over getting a migraine, they end up triggering a migraine. Yeah, yeah. You, you just said so, so much there. I'm going to go, love to open up a can of worms on a lot of things there, like the, cap, the tapping techniques and everything you just talked about. But you know, I think people have a really good appreciation of, of you know, what you offer and how you're addressing so many things that literally millions of people suffer from. And hopefully people take away from this that if you don't get to the root cause, right, you're literally always chasing your tail. You're always gonna be changing a medication. You're always going to be, you know, in a situation, like you said, where there's rebound effects from medication, you, you, you become reliant on the medication and you suffer all the side effects of the medication, right? So is there anything else that you wanted to um, address or talk about or wrap up? I think as a wrap up, I think that when you're dealing with um, a health issue, whether it be physical, or emotional, you need to look at the whole mind and body. Don't treat the symptom because the symptom just tells you there's a big problem. Um, and you really need to look at the biochemical, the nutritional aspect of it, the physical component to it, um, and the emotional component. When you address all three, you feel better and you're healthy. And that's really what you want. Yeah, beautiful. Doc, thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it. All right.